Hafidei Todus Hamsu, thank you for your participation in today's virtual Guam Trademark Commission meeting. This virtual meeting is convened by the Guam Trademark Commission that is hosted by the Committee on Heritage and the Arts, Parks, Guam Products, Hagatnya Revitalization, Self-Determination, and Regional Affairs. For the record, in accordance with the open government law, public meeting notices were given to all senators, stakeholders, and all main media broadcasting outlets, with the first notice being distributed on Wednesday, July 15th, 2020, and the second notice on Monday, July 21st, 2020. Notices have also been correspondingly published in the Guam Daily Post. Also, the virtual public meeting notice is posted on the legislature's website and has been there since June 15th at www.guamlegislature.org. Today is Thursday, July 23rd, 2020, and the time is now 5.12. This virtual Guam Trademark Commission meeting is now called to order. We currently have five members present, which represents a quorum. Sadhus Maasi for all of your virtual attendance at this afternoon's hearing. We will each introduce ourselves for the benefit of the viewing public, and this will also constitute as roll call. So um, I'll go in the order. I know we all see each other in a different order, but uh, for my order, I'll go ahead and just uh, make, I guess, kind of a loop <laughs> through, through the group of us. And so the first person is Ms. Hernandez. Uh, if you could introduce yourself by name and who the entity that you're representing. Off the day, my name is Ms. Hernandez. I'm representing the Guam Visitors Bureau. And then I see next, uh, Dr. Sauder. Half a day, I'm Laura Sauder, and I'm representing the speaker. I'm also a member of the Commission of Finotsamoro. Maulik. And next, I see uh, Mr. Baza. Half a day, good afternoon. Matthew Baza, the Guam Economic Development Authority. Maulik. And we have next uh, Master of Dance, uh, Francisco Rabon. Of a day, I'm Frank Rabon representing CAHA. I'm a board member for CAHA. Malik. And then next we have uh, Senadora Munya. Of a day, Guahusi, Senadora Louise Munya, and I'm representing my office. Excellent. And uh, we also have Mr. Guerrero here. Did you want to introduce yourself, Mr. Guerrero? Afine, I'm Francis Guerrero. I'm also a member of the CAHA board and chair of the board. Gulf Malik. And so, uh, so glad to have you all here. And definitely, it's an excellent representation of our community. So, as I begin, I, let's see, sorry, we already did the introduction, so we'll just move on to the next one. That represents those that are attending the meeting. And as you see, and I've just mentioned, we have a wide range of expertise. As always, I am so appreciative for your attendance. Each of your levels and types of expertise adds to this commission greatly. And that's exactly why you were selected. The agenda for this afternoon's virtual Guam Trademark Commission meeting is downloaded in a link contained within the notice emailed to all of the commissioners. I hope all of the participating commissioners were able to download and view today's agenda. The agenda focuses squarely on understanding the commission's actions as well as the names of the three subcommittee, subcommittees and their roles, which were adopted at last June's monthly meeting. Also for discussion are the status updates of meetings held, planned activities, any discussion of timeline estimates and deliverables where each subcommittee will, will present its status report. Then, 
after we have gone through that, um, by forming the committees, uh, by hearing the status updates, we are continuing to build that foundation necessary in our movement forward when carrying out our multi-layered and important work. Let's proceed on to item two on the agenda into the new business and continue to our virtual meeting requirements. Once again, thank you so much for joining me. The conduct of the hearing, excuse me, the meeting shall be as follows. All participants must abide by the rules of conduct and quality assurance standards, including broadcasting from a quiet room with little to no interruptions. The use of virtual backgrounds is not permitted. Broadcasting from a room with adequate lighting, specifically to ensure that a participant's face is not backlit, but visible at all times when speaking. Please ensure that you are unmuted and that you are speaking clearly into your microphone. The chair will recognize individuals to speak on the discussions at hand. Discussions shall be confined to the substance as it appears on the agenda. Today's meeting is the commission's 10th meeting. Our last monthly meeting was held on Wednesday, June 17th, 2020. At the commission's last meeting, the body discussed the formation and composition of each of the subcommittees and voted to adopt three subcommittees. The three adopted subcommittees are Tangible and Intangible Cultural Art Forms Subcommittee. And of course, we are um, definitely promoting the development of tomorrow names, if uh, those are so developed, or if there's uh, an adjustment to the name to better capture the work that you're doing. Aspects of Culture Subcommittee is the second one that was formed. And the third, trademark image branding, advertisements, marketing and sales to include the socioeconomic aspects of trademark policy and enforcement subcommittee. So I think the third one wins the prize for the longest committee name by far. <laughs> for new business on item two, we will go over the understanding of the three trademark commission subcommittees and the membership of each subcommittee. Let's also discuss leadership for the subcommittees as to whether that has or has not been established or whether that is the direction that subcommittee uh, chooses to go in. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to combine items 2.1b and old business item three, if that's all right so that we can talk about the subcommittee, but then also hear some feedback from uh, the different subcommittees themselves. That way it's more interactive and we get to hear from you much more quickly than waiting all the way to item three. So I'm sure that each of you will have something to report, maybe even just the structuring that you've been thinking of or discussing with your other members, maybe how you've divvied up some of the material or how you plan to approach the work, or maybe even just uh, letting us know when the, the meeting is going to be. I know time flies by very quickly and there's a lot of coordination in getting these subcommittees together. So any news will be much appreciated and it will help us in our movement forward. So with the first item, uh, let's go ahead and look at the tangible and intangible cultural arts forms subcommittee. So this is mentioned in 2GCA subsection 14105. And the subcommittee is comprised of all the members of the Commission If you know Tomorrow. And one of the things we'll be asking Dr. Souter to do is, is uh, when she gives the status update to just let us know who those commission members are so we get a better understanding of both the commission and the, the subcommittee itself. So with that subcommittee, 
It will be to define what is meant by tangible and intangible properties from an indigenous perspective. Different models will be assessed by the subcommittee and they will be looking at things such as what is sacred, what is privileged, what is cultural knowledge and who owns it uh, to some degree, but uh, Doctora, you can fill us in on how you're thinking about the, the boundaries of this uh, subcommittee as you feel is necessary to fill us in at this point. And some of what we discussed last time was that the impact of commercialization and capitalization uh, and capitalism, it influences our definition of ownership. And, and this is part of what we as a, a group are tackling, those legal frameworks, but then also those indigenous frameworks as to ownership of these rights. Um, so looking at them from the indigenous perspective will be very important. All of this is definitely no small task. And I really appreciate the thought and research that is going to go in all of our subcommittees, but this one uh, especially uh, in some ways. So Dr. Souter, if you could begin by mentioning who's in the subcommittee and just providing us uh, some of your thoughts of structure if, if you've gotten that far and uh, um, of any meetings that are upcoming or that you've had. I think you'll need to, I'm not sure if uh, we need to unmute you or if you're able to unmute yourself, there you go. Okay, at the last commission meeting, which was held last Thursday, we formally agreed to um, serve as the subcommittee for uh, tangible and intangible cultural art forms. And we also agreed on a strategy. Uh, we're having a work session, which we have uh, periodically, often twice a month, to uh, really begin to focus on what would be required in terms of the kinds of research we need to do and the kinds of discussions we need to have relative to uh, the mandate of, of the committee um, and to define terms, because that basically is, is what we're called to do, is to look at what other indigenous peoples, First Nations are doing in terms of defining these, um, these terms from a cultural perspective from an indigenous perspective. And what we agreed that we would do would be to look at these terms with a Chamorro optic and define them in Chamorro. Um, and we have to, we first have to identify the terms that are appropriately equivalent, right? To these terms, because these terms don't exist in the Chamorro language, but there are equivalencies. So um, we, we will look at the Chamo terms that are most aligned with the, the definitions of these terms on a, on a kind of worldwide basis or using the United Nations uh, <clears throat> terminology as a framework. And then once we've, I, we've defined the Chamo terms, we will uh, expand to, to uh, include what is associated with that term in terms of our assets, our cultural assets as an indigenous people. Uh, that's the strategy that we're gonna take. We will also uh, engage our staff in doing research on the way that other uh, First Nations have, have uh, grappled with this issue of definition and, and uh, clarity in terms of ownership of knowledge, for example, which is a very intangible uh, kind of ephemeral um, concept to, to deal with. Um, what, are the, what are the ways that other First Nations have protected these cultural assets? Uh, and the, the issue of ownership is critical uh, because it is so different from the Western conceptualization of ownership and commodification of, 
of culture. Um, and so we're going to be exploring this universe together to try to put forward a perspective which is truly reflective of the Chamorro way of thinking, the Chamorro pa'a, the Chamorro uh, mata. And uh, that's what we're committed to offering to, to the Trademarks Commission. The members, who are, who are we? Uh, aside from myself, I'm the Bisa Gehilu. I've been uh, elected as the vice chair, if you will, of, of the commission. Uh, Hope Cristobal, former Senator Hope Cristobal, is the Gehilu for the commission. And then uh, Senora Rosa Palomo is the secretary of the commission. We also have uh, several members appointed by the university. Dr. Robert Underwood is one of those members and uh, Senora Teresita Flores is another of the uh, UOG members. We have two members appointed from DOE and they are Senora Rufina uh, Mendiola and Senor Jimmy Teria. Okay, they represent DOE. We have uh, representing your committee, Sen Senadora. We have uh, Polly Felix Berto Leon Guerrero, who's who's representing Senator uh, Kelly Marsh, and and the committee. We have um, as well. Uh, did I include everybody? No. Uh, Arlene Santos is now the new president of DCA, and she, by virtue of her position, also sits on on the committee. Uh, I do believe I've, I've covered everyone. There should be nine of us. And um, we also have, uh, we're very, very happy that we have on staff uh, now, uh, Senora Anne-Marie Arceo, who is, now the, uh, who is now the director of the Revitalization Center. We're very, very pleased to, to uh, be able to um, have gotten her on board. We have Dr. Francine Naputi, who's one of our uh, Chamorro language specialists. And we also have Roland Blas, who's our secretary, board secretary. And we're hoping to grow our team uh, in quick order. So this, this constitutes the, the, the committee that will uh, engage in this endeavor. But we are very, very open and very welcoming of anyone who wants to assist us. We are having a, a work session on, on uh, August 6th. It will be a Zoom session. So if anybody is interested in joining us for conversation, you don't have to make a commitment beyond just sharing your knowledge and sharing your, your understanding of these issues. Uh, please don't hesitate to contact me. You can contact me through the Senator. I'm sure her, her office team will, will direct uh, your phone number or your email address to, to me. Please know that we welcome your participation, your uh, ideas, and uh, we hope that, that people will take this very seriously and, and join us in this endeavor. Sisu Ismaasi for sharing all of that work. There's really been quite a bit of work that you have done quite a bit of organizing. Uh, you have an excellent team that's gonna be working together. And it's very good to hear that you're also open to having others uh, contribute and participate in a variety of ways. Um, I know that I've sat in on some of your meetings. Now, I'm not sure for this one, it may largely be in uh, Gifino tomorrow as well, but even though I'm not a fluent speaker, um, I can follow along and uh, I still get so much out of the meetings. And so um, if, if others are, are wanting to participate and if they're not fluent speakers, um, I think that they should still uh, reach out and participate in the ways that they can. But like I said, even being part of the meetings, you still absorb a lot and understand a lot and can contribute. So uh, I, I'm glad to hear of that uh, open invitation and I hope that some people will also participate. Very good, Malik. The next uh, group that we have, um, I'm not sure, let me change some of my 
viewing to see if um, Ms. Rita has, uh, Nauta has been able to join us, but maybe not yet. But we do have other committee members um, that are representing CAHA. So I don't know if Mr. Francis Guerrero or um, Mr. Uh, Frank Rabone, if you'll be able to speak to the next subcommittee a bit. So this one is called the Aspects of Culture Subcommittee. It was adopted unanimously by the commissioners that were present. The subcommittee is created following sections 14105B, one through five uh, as the set of tasks that it's going to be pursuing. It is in Title II GCH. This is involving the development of the logo uh, amongst other tasks such as identifying the types of cultural arts that would be considered in the trademark, the criteria for the lineage of cultural um, knowledge, qualifying for the use and uh, the criteria for the authenticity of work, qualifying for the use of the trademark, the quality of arts, qualifying for the use of the trademark and the, the criteria for cultural content for qualifying for the use of a trademark. Um, so as you can see, uh, for each and every subcommittee, there's quite a bit of work. Uh, for the membership, what has been proposed, but it would be good to uh, solidify that today, and it's up for discussion, is that the Department of Tomorrow Affairs be a member, that the Guam Council on the Arts and Humanities and Guampedia, uh, those members also be part of that group. I believe that yes, GVB is in the third one. So is there someone here, um, is, is one of the representatives from CAHA able to speak about this subcommittee? Uh, Frank, I'm not sure if you know anything more. I, the, the, I've not met yet with the subcommittee, so I think we're, we're still in the formation uh, stages. Um, that, that's yes, and correct. okay, yeah, and and you know it's it's a big endeavor to tackle, and it shouldn't be taken lightly. We appreciate that everybody is taking it so seriously, and so that does mean that it takes time, it takes thought, and it it takes getting everybody's schedules coordinated. So um, we appreciate that. It is being approached in a very serious manner. The members that are part of that second subcommittee are very dedicated, long time, very experienced cultural practitioners and those that have been working with um, cultural knowledge and historical knowledge. Um, so we have also received a message from Rita Nauta. She is part of a, a she, she has also been in another meeting right now and so she hasn't been able to come over. But one of the things I just asked the subcommittee to do when you, when you are able to meet is also consider whether it's going to be useful to have a, a head of this subcommittee so that there's a, a particular person or a a vice chair um, who can call the meeting to order, coordinate everybody's schedules and, and so forth. Or if your approach is gonna be otherwise, whether it's gonna be more of a round table, if you can consider those as well, and then just let us know what your decision is so that we can get that recorded into our minutes. Senator, just a question. Yes. yes. Uh, uh, Seeing who the members are, I would assume DCA means uh, the new president, Arlene Santos. Of course, Guampedia is um, uh, Rita Nauta. And then yep. representing on the commission here for uh, uh, CAHA would be Frank Rabone and myself. Uh, 
would there be any restrictions if uh, given the intensity and the uh, importance of what this committee needs to come up uh, subcommittee needs to come out with uh, that others in the community uh, be invited to participate yes so I, i'm very glad that you asked that and um, again i i think the same sort of invitation could be good because you know our our community is very fortunate. It has uh, people with uh, various levels of experience, various types of knowledge throughout the island. It, it can range from family to family and village to village, region to region. So if somebody is interested and would, would like to work with your uh, subcommittee, they could reach out to my office, but it may be more direct for them to reach out to Kaha Perhaps uh, since you're you're here, we can we can kind of speak for Kaha. Um, does that sound amenable, uh, Mr. Guerrero? Sure. I, I think the reason I bring it up is is because um, I, I think there are so many cultural practitioners here on the island. Uh, many that Kaha has named as masters over the years, uh, and given. Oh, there's Rita. She's connecting. And oh, given uh, we're going to uh, determine the use of the logo and, and uh, who will be uh, given, you know, the permission to use it, uh, probably the criteria that we set forth, it might be good to enlist uh, others just for uh, so that we're well represented uh, when we put this out uh, for final approval. And then I think the other piece of it becomes, uh, I think, working very closely and in tandem with the um, tangible and, and intangible cultural art form subcommittee, just because a lot of what they come out with will determine a lot of what we end up approving as um, guidelines, if you will, for qualifying to use the certificate. Very good points, uh, Sadus Maasi, for making them. And uh, since we do have Ms. Rita now to joining us, Sadus Maasi, for rushing from one meeting straight into another, we appreciate that dedication very much. Um, if, if everybody could, at least for this part, uh, while we're working on the sub, second subcommittee, if uh, Mr. Rabone and Guerrero and Rita, if you guys could put on your video and then that way when we're going through your second your subcommittee uh, we can see everybody who's involved so there's my see sorry then, senator i ran home to do this meeting and okay my, no problem my camera at home is not working okay no uh, no problem at all and we do have your audio so um for those who you know the, the technical issues come into play uh, we've we've worked with that before. Do you know, uh, Vic, if Miss Nauta is logged on all the way so that she can turn on her camera as well? There Just you are. Oh, look at how dedicated you are. Thank you so much. <laughs> I'm so sorry, dispenser put for what? No, no, that's uh, Tata Guaja. That's uh, understandable. And we appreciate that uh, you have done what you could uh, as you rushed out <laughs> of one meeting to join us. So we're just talking amongst ourselves um, for your subcommittee. I don't know that you've had a chance to meet. Um, you know, it is, it is something to try to coordinate all of our schedules. But I was saying that one of the things that your subcommittee might consider is how they want to structure itself, whether you want it to be a roundtable sort of thing or whether it's more appropriate to have uh, a leader that can call order and uh, coordinate everybody's schedules and, and gather everybody together. Um, have, have any of you been able to meet thus far or is that uh, something that you're working on? We did have a meeting. Um, this was um, with uh, um, 
I think we had it in actually trying to recall. I'm so sorry. Uh, we did have one preliminary meeting uh, with Jackie Balbus and with Anne Marie Arceo at the time. And um, what we did identify was that um, between CAHA under their particular programs like the masters um, that they have all of those particular guidelines already in place. We did list all these other organizations that have similar um, structure or framework that we could work with. So it was, we did um, uh, compile a list of partners and people organizations. We did identify that and that we could definitely cut and paste um, into um, the, you know, to find, to look at what's already existing and paste, uh, compile those into the guidelines that we were assigned to, um, uh, to uh, cover. So that was the initial, um, uh, that was during our initial meeting and it was just um, being able to compile the resources. And so I did, um, you know, um, offer to, to try to help do that. Um, so it's just a matter of pulling all of those, uh, like from the master's program. And I did speak from our last meeting, uh, Joey Sir, Joseph Certeza had represented, um, was there on behalf of CAHA. And so we had discussion about, you know, um, trying to get those materials or that information. So that was the extent of our meeting. And I think that um, a roundtable format would work as well, because this is something that within our respective organizations, um, we all are familiar with. So it's really just um, being able to take what we have existing and put it in the appropriate guide under the appropriate guidelines. Well, that sounds very good. Uh, it sounds like it was quite productive and uh, that you are really thinking about what approach is going to be efficient, but also effective. And, you know, it's going to have some of that tried and true, those tried and true elements to it as well. And um, we're very fortunate to have several people from CAHA, um, Frank Ribone and uh, Francis Guerrero, uh, Joseph Certeza, Jackie Balbus, they've each been part of this for so long that they, I know that they have uh, recommendations as to how to strengthen what's there for the master's program. Um, and so forth. So I think that's a, a very productive beginning and then it will give you that really good foundation to, uh, to build on from. Um, uh, and I'm sure it will create a lot of very lively discussion <laughs> as, yeah. as, so, as well. As well. And, and we, we all agreed that it wasn't something that we need to, we needed to construct, you know, from the ground up that there is already precedence, there's already established um, um, aspects so that we could just, um, you know, take from there and work with what's existing. That makes a lot of sense. And I can see the value of that. And it also provides for consistency that mm -hmm. one program makes sense with an adjacent program and they're not in heavy conflict from one another or uh, they're, they're not um, speaking very differently than one another. So again, that makes a lot of sense. And I appreciate that thought that everybody's put into that thus far. So that's a very good update. And your timing was actually uh, just perfect. You came in at just the right time to be able to share all of that. <laughs> Thank you for um, uh, your patience and understanding. <laughs> Oh, absolutely. Um, we understand that everybody has uh, numerous meetings that they're, they have in their schedules and that a lot of times it is just uh, dashing from one meeting to the next. Yeah. And then, so for the third subcommittee, um, we're very fortunate to have Dee Hernandez here. Thank you very much for representing Christine uh, from GVB, and we have Mr. Baza as well, who can be speaking about this third subcommittee. So let me go over this uh, third one, the one with a very long name and quite a bit of aspects that it will be covering for the commission. Uh, they're each going to be important as well. So after much discussion, two proposed subcommittees were joined into a single subcommittee. A motion to establish the third subcommittee 
the trademark, image, branding, advertising, marketing, sales, and socioeconomic aspects of a trademark policy and enforcement subcommittee covers subsection 14105B, item six through 10. That motion was made by Christine Lazama and seconded by Joseph Certeza. The motion was passed unanimously by the commission. Membership of the third subcommittee includes commission representatives from the Guam Visitors Bureau, the Department of Revenue and Taxation, the Guam Economic Development Agency, and the Attorney General's Office. So if um, one of you, I'm not sure if you've talked amongst the both of you as to who will be providing some status update, or maybe you both will have some different aspects to share. Uh, either Mr. Hernandez or Mr. Baza. Shall we start with Mr. Baza? Uh, sure, uh, yes. Um, yeah, we had a meeting on the 17th of July. Um, in that meeting was, of course, Miss Christine, uh, myself, and Mr. Mike Unshuk and Miss Monica Frankis from Revintax. And basically, you know, we sat down and, and we were thinking about what would our role be, especially in this early stage. And um, we're kind of in a holding pattern right now. We're, we're waiting to see what the other two subcommittees um, have determined is what we're trying to certify, right? So the first two subcommittees are very crucial in identifying these are the arts, both, um, you know, uh, in, in the intrinsic, the trademarks, all the, the cultural art, uh, both um, tangible and intangible. These are the things we deem important and what we want to certify to protect. And then we come in and we um, now have to talk, we talk first about how do we do the whole, um, the whole, the process that, that the, the artist and the art organization would go through and also the vendor of that, that art, whether it's tangible or intangible. And then we start talking about marketing and promotions and, and sort of helping the, the, art, the art economy grow, right? Um, one of the things that we talked about that was very important was that like the second subcommittee, we don't necessarily have to reinvent the wheel as people say. Um, there's already processes for the Guam product sale, for example. There's already processes for getting a business license or even for a nonprofit organization to establish themselves as a nonprofit. So um, one of the things we were thinking about was once um, the art is identified and what the what needs to be um, certified and what needs to and what these art organizations or these artists or vendors need to get to get certified is we could try to find a way to funnel them through an already established process and make some adjustments as needed to include this new this new um, requirement that, that we're coming up with. You know, we're not, I, I think the whole commission is trying to think of who's gonna be the body at the end of the day that's going to give the stamp of approval per se on, on, on the art. And then um, once that stamp of approval is given for a particular piece of art, for lack of a better term, then it moves along the process that if someone is gonna take that art and sort of use it in a business sense as I'm gonna package it, sell it, promote it, then it goes through a process. Um, one of the things we talked about was anything that's made in Guam with the, with the very few exceptions requires a Guam product sale. Um, anyone who has a business license that has the word manufacture on it um, or produces or makes in theory, not in theory, in actuality needs to get a Guam product sale. So if this, person or this artist or this business now says, I'm making this in Guam and this is Chamorro. It meets the, ch the Chamorro standard that gets adopted. Then one of the things that the government, the regulatory agencies can say is, okay, well, we need a copy of your, of the trademark, right? So, and then, then if you have one, then you move along the process. If not, we send you to whatever entity you need to go to, to get that certification. Um, because neither Revintax nor Gita nor GVB or the AG have any sort of um, expertise on knowing whether something um, is, you know, meets that criteria or not. Um, and we do understand that this is going to take a lot of 
work to sort of get businesses and even you know nonprofit organizations to understand what needs to be done. So like the other subcommittees, we're, we're thinking about maybe drafting some sort of survey that we would ask artists um, and, and even, even businesses that want, you know, we could ask businesses, are you interested in, in doing an extra layer of, 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 of approval to say that your art is, your product, whether it's, and it's art is traditionally Chamorro, um, that gives you an extra layer of, of authenticity as it were. Um, we also want, we may want to do a round table with the business community to say, you know, what are your struggles now? And if we implement something like this, will it make it even harder for you to do manufacturing of, of products that, that are, you know, very, that are intrinsically Chamorro? Because at the end of the day, um, one of the, the takeaways we, we took out of our subcommittee meeting was we really want to see more products, more pieces of art, whether their paintings or, you know, whatever they are, to, to really meet that sort of cultural standard if we can. Um, it just, it improves our, our, our destination and then it helps our economy. We're also thinking about it in an economic development perspective. So we are definitely gonna have to reach out to the business community um, and see where their, what their take is on this when, we, when we're a little bit further along. Um, and also how can we fit this commission and whatever entity that's gonna end up certifying the art how can we fit it in an existing process? Because if we make an entirely new process that now businesses and nonprofit organizations are going to have to go through, then it might just discourage the, the whole point, you know, our, our goal of what we're trying to do here. So um, we're, we're still in a little bit of holding pattern. We're very interested to see what the other, suit, what the other two subcommittees come up with. And hopefully um, as we get more information from from the other two subcommittees, we can really, you know, hit the ground running and sort of pull our expertise together. I know Reverend Tax is going to work on preparing a presentation on the uh, trademarks, patents, and certificates for the subcommittee uh, to look at, so we can have more information on that. Um, I think, you know, we've already presented a lot of on product sale um, and GVB, of course, of the branding. Um, I, I'm sure um, Ms. D can speak more to that, but. You know, we're we're very much uh, already attuned to that. It just we're just kind of waiting to see what what the commission overall kind of picks as these are the things we're trying to certify and protect and and promote. It sounds like a very very productive meeting along with the others, um, and you covered a breadth of considerations, and that's exactly what we need. We need to hear um, how this is going to fit into or in what ways it's going to fit into uh, business considerations. Um, and it makes me think I'm pretty sure we had some discussion, but I think it's good at looking back at it again and maybe discussing it again. Uh, if I remember correctly, Dr. Stouter, I think you had mentioned that there could be these different levels. So. Some will be more maybe like a high art, and uh, there would be maybe another level of uh, criteria and consideration for those that would be something that would be uh, maybe so handcrafted, but more mass produced. And then maybe there could even be a criteria for those that um, are, are definitely mass produced. Did we, did we have some discussion? Could you remind us of, of some of that or share some of your thoughts? I do recall when um, we had a representative from the Attorney General's office that gave us, uh, remember we did that exercise where we explored different uh, types of, of um, product and trademark uh, regulations regarding branding and that sort of thing. And uh, it became clear then, for example, there were some Sinahis and she had, uh, she had uh, selected some items that were sold in stores on Guam and had us uh, kind of uh, give our perspective on whether or not something was a, a reflection of, a, of an artistic mastery form uh, of uh, artistic expressions that were, that were commercial product. And uh, it became clear to us that, that, that uh, whether it's the trades mark or whether it's the guidance that we put out as a commission, 
that relates to um, that relates to different products and their uses. Uh, that we needed to understand that that we had to approach this from a layered perspective, because, for example, the use of the lati is that. Um, is that prohibited under every circumstance? Under what circumstance can the symbol, which is a cultural symbol, uh, which is also part of our ancestral uh, artifactual, uh, you know, inheritance, how does that play in? Is it just, do we put um, guidance or prohibitions related to actual Lati or to the symbol of the Lati, for example? So we discuss some of that. Um, and, and so it is nuanced, and we need to pay attention to that because one size does not fit all in, in, in this circumstance, right? So some people, as Frank had mentioned, Frank Rabon, you had mentioned that, um, that there were symbols that you created uh, on fabric, right, that, that, uh, that were made for, to sell, if I'm not mistaken, and that that should have... Uh, you know the the authentic seal of of a cultural uh, culturally meaningful product uh, relate that related to that would be different from the use of of um, you know we don't own the gualafun right we don't own the 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 sinahi the the moons but we we own the knowledge of the thirteen moons so how do how do we separate that and guide guide the use of these symbols and under what circumstances can they be made into commercial product and whose product is authentic an authentic expression of our cultural knowledge those those are the kinds of considerations um matt do you recall these conversations uh i'm sure you were there too uh that that would that would require us to to sort of level the kinds of of uh, restriction, if you will. Yeah, I do remember some of those conversations and that's sort of where our subcommittee, we're trying to get a handle of all of this because um, it's very clear that there's gonna need to be an expert, someone you know, that's deemed to be either a person or another group of people that are deemed to be the person who can say that to use the Lati as an example, that if someone comes in and says, I want to put a trademark on this Lati stone um, carving that I've made, that for it's it's been approved by someone or a group of people that say this meets the cultural standard. It's And that includes not just the process, but also, I guess, the respect, right? The respect of and the, and the, and the acknowledgement that it's not an improper use of that of that um, um, symbol, that cultural symbol. So um, it would be very, we would need to find a way to fit that into the already existing process of someone who wants to commercialize that product um, moving forward. And, and, and you know, for some businesses, they may say, well, I want to get a trademark for products or art A, B, and C, but Art D, E, and F, which is just sort of my everyday, I'm selling it. I don't necessarily need, I don't necessarily want the trademark on that. That's my my little tchotchke type item. But for these items that I feel are my premium, important, true items, I want to get the trademark for. So, uh, uh, you know, in theory, an artist can get a trademark for some, but not all. Uh, a, an artist may say, I, I don't need it. You know, I just I just want to make art um, and, and sell it. So those are a lot of things that we're considering um, as we move forward with with our subcommittee's tasks. Right, and how the how, how artistic and, and cultural representations, where do they dovetail? And, and you know, what is the guidance? Because we have no intention of stopping any artistic expression, right? But we do have a responsibility to protect cultural assets. So that's, and, and representation or the misrepresentation or misappropriation of cultural assets, we know is, a, is an ongoing uh, feud in the broader world, you know, Hawaii and, and, uh, and the, the, the movie, remember that, that film and, and the whole, um, the whole uh, controversies that arose from, from uh, 
the film industry relating relating to the misappropriation of cultural knowledge, cultural traditions. We just have to be clear about what what we as a community deem appropriate and inappropriate usage. And at what point can you use symbols that are sacred uh, without, you know, uh, without being sacrilegious, if you will, <laughs> in relation to the symbol. So I think that that's, um, and then the collect who owns symbols and who can use symbols is also a question. You know, people are saying, well, uh, if I'm not Chamorro, does that mean I can't use Chamorro symbolism? Um, I don't think that what that's our intent as much as we say whatever, whoever uses the symbolism needs to use it in a sacred and, and uh, respectful way. So we have, it's really, it's very nuanced and it's, it's sticky stuff, you know, it's not easy to wade through this stuff. So, uh, and then who has the authority to pronounce it? Well, of course the law does. Uh, and, and ultimately the senators do uh, as they as they promulgate these policies. So um, yeah, you're right. And who, who is the body that's gonna make these determinations? And are, do they exist already? Do we have to create a, another body? You're asking you know some very significantly important questions. So it's not gonna be not gonna be an easy task, folks. <laughs> yeah, if, if I can just add, um... And Matt, you can speak to this as well. I think this is really where there's a clear delineation between the Guam Trademark Commission and let's say existing things like the Guam Product Seal Program. Because we're starting to, to talk about the use of symbols. And uh, I think for the Trademark Commission, it's more about, to your point, Laura, protecting the use of them in terms of uh, being sacrilegious, if you will. Uh, but as far as then producing them commercially, that's a whole different ball game because now the Guam product seal comes in if they're going to say made in Guam versus not. Uh, many of the artists will be able to produce original artwork, for, uh, for instance, if they're painting or uh, sculpting or whatnot. But beyond that, if they're going to go to things like mass production, let's face it, Guam does not really have the factories that actually do hard goods to create what these other people are bringing in here and using left and right as symbols, uh, which is why that exercise that the AG's office did with us was great because there were so many replicas that we really couldn't even tell whether they were authentically made here or not. And I think this this is where maybe, maybe the Trademark Commission's uh, you know, the gist of it should be as far as us determining who gets the usage of or is granted the usage of the trademark. Uh, it's not so much about made in Guam as opposed to you're using a symbol that we've delineated as one of these uh, Guam symbols on our list that we're protecting. So if you're going to use it, you have to come to the commission for some sort of a certification, regardless of whether they're producing here in Guam or not. No, I think that's a, a really important distinction to be discussing is because we do have the Guam product seal here. So we don't necessarily have to um, also do that. This could be something where it is just the certification and you can have that trademark logo for that certification. And if you choose to make it also be something produced on Guam, then you could also have the Guam product seal, but it could provide a certain amount of flexibility, partly because we have tomorrow's around the world, let's say, um, but maybe but maybe also because of some of our, as, as Mr. Guerrero was saying, some of our limitations uh, for certain things for making them here. Um, I know with the Guam product seal, there is still some flexibility. So I was thinking about some of the different Guam product seals products. And I know some of them are like stuffed animals or whatever. And so I don't know what the regulations are, whether they get the, the parts of it or they get the shell of it and then they stuff it. But there are ways where it's transformed here to be able to meet that criteria. Um, 
but yeah, perhaps just keeping them as separate. One is the certification of authenticity and being able to earn that recognition and that trademark. And then the other would be if they want to go in the direction of the Guam product seal, that still is another step that they could add. Yeah, I, I, I think, you know, for the commission, one of the questions we have to ask is how deep do we want to go, right? So to use an example, Guam law already has a section that says you cannot use the seal of Guam, the Guam seal, without getting approval uh, by the Lieutenant Governor of Guam. So we've already carved out in Guam law that the Guam seal under the law is sacred. You cannot just use it. You need to get permission to use it if you're gonna use it for, in, especially in particular for a commercial purpose. So then we have to use that sort of mindset with what we're working on here to go back to the Lati. Are we gonna now say that we're gonna consider the Lati, the symbol of the Lati and we, is sacred, that if you're gonna use it in any form or fashion outside of personal use, that you need to get approval from whatever body that exists, right? Uh, to, to certify that. Um, and so what would happen is, now if someone were to take that symbol and for example, make a, a some sort of figurine out of it, right? And they were gonna sell it. Now, if this becomes, once this becomes a law, then it would be incumbent now on the government through the Guam product sale, which is Gita, to say, oh, uh, what are you making? Oh, I'm making Laddy Stone figurines. Um, the law says that this needs a trademark. You cannot use this image, this, this cultural symbol, without it being approved first. So we would kick it back if it doesn't already have the trademark to get a trademark before we could say you could legally make this product in Guam. So it all depends on how deep um, the commission goes and what it and, and like our, our subcommittee said, it's all depending how we regulate a program or draft, draft, craft a program, depends on what the other two subcommittees deem is how deep we're gonna go with regards to protecting the symbols. Yeah, that, that definitely uh, I think is something that uh, we'll be sorting out to some degree. Uh, either that or authorizing a body, if that's the direction we go to, that we're authorizing the body to make those determinations, um, that we would be setting the policy and the framework, and then they would maybe on a case-by-case -case basis um, have that authority to make those determinations. Um, and I think that's some of how we will not get too bogged down uh, because we could probably look at each and every aspect uh, well, uh, for uh, term after term after term, but but if we come up with the framework of how this will work and how it can be tackled, then those deliberations, situation by situation, can be tackled by that uh, that body if that's the direction we go in. Uh, if that makes sense to everybody. Are there, are there any other issues that people wanted to bring up? I think this has been a very healthy discussion and I'm very impressed with how everybody has tackled their subcommittees. I think each subcommittee has made quite a bit of progress. Oh, I, I did wanna ask the third subcommittee, um, did you decide on how you're going to structure your subcommittee? Uh, is it more of that round table format where everybody gets together and works together? Or is there any one or any entity that's going to be leading your subcommittee? We're still sort of in the informal stages um, of setting everything up. We're, we're still trying to get a better handle of what we're going to do. But, uh, and we're still, all three of us, both Reverend Tax, Gita, and GVB are all still thinking of who else we may want to include in the subcommittee. Um, and we will, of course, reach out to the AG's office as well uh, as we move forward along, more, more forward on the actual setting up of some, you know, regulations. Uh, so yeah, we're, we're not there yet. Um, hopefully by the time we have our next meeting, we can square all of that away. But we've had a very productive meeting with just sort of a round table discussion. Everyone take notes and contribute their opinion and their thoughts at this point. 
Yes, it did sound very productive. And the AG's office has been having interviews and, and hiring people. I know they've gone through some shortages of uh, people retiring or otherwise moving on. And so I'm hoping that that's gonna help our commission as well, that they are getting through the interview processes and they're hopefully moving on with some hiring. So um, we've, we've been having open discussion as related to the subcommittees. Is there any other topic that anybody would like to discuss in the open, open discussion section? I think we're pretty good. So um, again, it's, this is uh, one of the highlights of my week. It's been something I've been looking forward to uh, throughout the week. So with that, as I mentioned, we've covered good ground and we've got a lot of strong structure that's getting put into place. Some very, very robust discussions happening in the subcommittees. And then as we bring that information back amongst us. If there are no further items for discussion, can I hear a motion to adjourn? Uh, Senator, motion. before we adjourn, uh, is there oh, a yes. schedule for the next uh, Trademark Commission meeting? Um, we should to have them every month. We are, and I'm, I'm really glad that you asked because this upcoming month is gonna be um, a little bit more difficult to schedule because we are going into our budget session. And the budget session often takes a couple of weeks long. And so we would aim ideally for August, but the reality is, is it may need to be the first week of September. So I will have my staff work on that and get that information to you so that you can have a tentative date uh, and, and get that scheduled into your calendars because I know everybody's calendar fills up really quickly. Um, so my, my best estimate at this time is we'll probably be shooting for the first week of September. So I'm, I'm really glad that you asked that because um, we might have been thinking otherwise that it would be towards the end of August again, but we have to get that budget approved by August 30th. So it's gonna make those last couple of weeks in August uh, real tight. It's <laughs> uh, a very good question. And then I think uh, Dr. Souter, if you could unmute yourself, I think you were gonna give a motion to adjourn. I move to adjourn. I second. I and, and then uh, a second by uh, both Mr. Francis Guerrero and uh, D. Hernandez. So all those in favor, if everybody could unmute themselves and say aye. 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 Wolf Malik. Motion carries to adjourn this virtual Guam Trademark Commission meeting. The Guam Trademark Commission meeting is now adjourned. So do us Masi for your attendance and participation in today's virtual Guam Trademark Commission meeting. The time is now 614. Have a very good evening. You all deserve it for all the work you've been doing. <laughs> Take care. Bye-bye. Take care. Esther.